Father, we're excited about the Word. We're excited, Lord God, that Christmas is a season that reminds us that you loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son into the world. And so today, God, we just pray, Father, that you'd breathe upon me, Lord God. Let the words of my lips bring life to every individual in this room, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So Christmas morning, uh, as a little boy, was a very exciting time for me. Uh, I'm sure it was pretty exciting for you. But, but I, I remember, you know, waking up and the, the excitement was to run from my room all the way down the hallway into the lounge to see the hundreds and hundreds of presents. Now, uh, there was probably never hundreds and hundreds of presents, but for a little kid, uh, I mean, the mound of presents, I mean, the day before there was only a few, but uh, man, something happened overnight. There are gifts all over the show, and I, I couldn't wait to get my hands onto some of those gifts. Uh, uh, I mean, in our household, it wasn't like free for all. It wasn't like you could just dive in and grab a gift. You had to wait your time. And uh, kind of the way it worked in our household was that you kind of sat around and a gift was given to you, and uh, that's when you opened up your gift. Now, before that even happened, you had to wait for timing. And so, so uh, you know, you would go over it and you'd be looking under the tree for your name. You do that even though... You are over 50 years of age to this day. I mean, I know what you do. You go over and you give it a bit of a feel and you pick it up. You're kind of intrigued to know what is that gift under that tree. Well, kind of the way it worked is, is that it was given to you and we would watch. We would kind of celebrate the gift they got. And when that present was open, it came to the next side. Some of you do it that way. Some of you, it's just free for all. You just get in there and it's over in three minutes. But... Uh, uh, but, but anyway, um, the, the thing is, is that uh, under the tree, there were these gifts with my name. This Christmas, it's likely that you're going to have some gifts that are going to come in your direction and it's going to have your name that's on that gift. And see, see the thing is this, is over the, uh, the, the, over the course of time, you'll understand that God has actually got some incredible gifts for you. The kingdom of God has got incredible gifts. When you read the Word of God, you discover the Word of God is actually filled with one gift after another. Psalm 68 verses 19 says that God daily loads us with blessings. If you think of blessings as a little gift, a wrapped up gift that's coming in our direction, but He shows up and uh, He wants to jam us up. He wants to fill us with the promises of God uh, and, and so that's what he's, and, and this Christmas, you can understand there are, some, there, there are some gifts that he wants to give us. In fact, when you read the Word of God, the Christmas story, there are a whole lot of gifts that are there. And we're going to look today, we're going to look at some of the Christmas story, and we're going to see some of the gifts that God's got for us that need, we need to be reminded of today. Uh, that's what we're going to be looking. And so as you can see, I've titled this message today, The Gifts of Christmas. So let's get into this, the first gift. The first gift coming up on the screen is, was a gift that came to Elizabeth. Now, there's no uh, specific order to my message today, but uh, I wanted to look at Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth was pregnant. One day, she had a visit from her, her cousin. Uh, her cousin was much younger. Uh, her younger cousin was also pregnant, and her name was later to become Mother Mary, the, the, the mother of Jesus. Uh, she's pregnant with the Son of God. And uh, Mary walks into that house. We have uh, Luke chapter 1 and verses 39 through 41. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary wasn't just pregnant with any old baby, as you know. I mean, there, at that time, there were plenty of pregnant people at that time, but she was pregnant with the Son of God. And so she was carrying around uh, the Messiah, the promised one. She, I mean, it was, it was fully human, but it was also fully God. And uh, later they were going to call him Jesus, as you know. And uh, later on, uh, Jesus actually made this statement. About 30 years later, he makes this statement in John 10.10. 10, he says, I'm going to come and give you life and life in all its fullness. So, so the gift that Elizabeth got that day is coming up on the screen is the gift of life. 
That baby uh, inside of Elizabeth was later to be called John the Baptist. John the Baptist, uh, six months uh, ahead of Jesus. But see, see, when Mary walked into that room, uh, there, there was something that was on Jesus. Uh, you can understand that Jesus had life. God has got life. Jesus said, I'm coming to give you life and life in all its fullness. And so as soon as Mary walked into that room, there was that leap on the inside of her, her womb that, that it took place at that time. And, and immediately, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. See, see, God can't help himself. See, see, whenever he shows up, he brings a gift of life. You may be dead today, but, but just know that he comes to give life. One of the founding fathers of this nation, his name was Benjamin Franklin. He once said this, he said, some people die at 25 and are buried at 75. Many people on planet earth today, as you know, are dead. How do I know that? Well, it says in Romans chapter six and verses 23 that the wages of sin is death. I mean, you're looking at someone that's dabbled in sin many times over in my life and I know as I look out across the, the crowd here today, many of you, in fact, every one of us in this place have dabbled in sin. And as a result of us dabbling, playing with sin and, and, and getting involved in sin, it's created this spiritual death that's upon us. And as a result of that, it's created this separation between God, ultimately separating us from God for all eternity. But see, Christmas is a reminder that despite me and my mess, He brings life. And maybe things are dead right now in your life. Maybe there's some dreams that are dead. Maybe there's some promises that you thought would have taken place. And maybe even this last year, you thought it was gonna take place and it didn't take place. Maybe there's some goals that you'd set and you thought, man, I would have achieved it by now, but it just seems dead right now. All seems dead. Significance of this story is even greater than what I've just mentioned. Why? Because... Elizabeth, as I said beforehand, was very old. Mary was quite young. In fact, she would have been in her teen years, but her cousin, Elizabeth, scholars believe that she was about 88 years of age. Her husband, Zachariah, 99 years of age, and that's what they said. And so the, the thing about Elizabeth was that she was barren. She was never able to have kids, and she'd never had kids. Uh, John the Baptist was her first child, her only child, uh, and, and so she'd never had a baby. She wanted a child, uh, but, but she'd never had that. And see, 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 if you get to your 50s and you've never had your child, it's like maybe in the 40s, it's kind of, you're kind of at the tipping point, will it happen? But man, if I'm going to cross my 50s, it, it's never going to happen. I mean, who has a baby in their 50s? It's just physically not possible. And, and so she's got past the childbearing age, and then, then, then it's physically impossible Another decade goes by, another decade goes by, and then now, now, she, now she's, I guess, in, a, in her latter years of her life, disappointed. D disappointed because she had a dream, she wanted to have a child, and then she's looking at younger women that are, that are coming through having one child after another child. And so you see, maybe like Elizabeth, your dream is dead. Maybe it just feels like everything around about you right now is barren. But just know this, that Christmas is a reminder that God brings a gift of life. Even when it seems incredibly impossible, God can bring life to any barrenness that's going on in your life. I mean, 27, 28 years ago, uh, first year of marriage, we came to the metro here and we, we fell in love. We, we, we kind of knew that there was something. We were born on the other side of the planet, uh, a little country called New Zealand. And but, but there was something inside of us said, we want to live in America. Something inside of us said, we want to go dream that the kind of we wanted to pick up, we wanted to run with. And, but, but it just seemed like one year passed, another year passed. And just like, when, when is this going to take place? And I, I, we moved to Australia. We started a church and that was flourishing, was going so well. But kind of, there was still this hidden dream sitting inside us that one day we would live in the United States. We would go there and we kind of made a decision, okay, we got to do this. And we stepped out, we transitioned the church, handed the church over. And then, then, then we find out there's this pandemic. I mean, we, we got the tickets. We even had a return ticket to come back here. But then this pandemic shows up, the world shuts down. 
Now, now the dream, it, it just seems impossible. I, I mean, not only is there a pandemic, but the, the planes are now like grounded. They're not flying. There's no flights going. But in the midst of all that and the impossibility, God brought life. He blew life into a what, what seemed pretty barren. It seemed pretty dead. He brought life into that situation. And in the middle of pandemic, and not only did we get the visa, but we got the flights. And on November the 12th, 2020, we landed here to start this dream called Game Changer Church. And I say all that because like me and like Elizabeth, maybe you've got some dead dreams. Maybe there's things that you've been holding on to, 2023, and you've kind of gone, well, maybe it's it. Maybe I'm gonna push it aside. Come on, I wanna say this, keep dreaming, keep believing. Come on, Carolyn, go forth. Maybe there's another baby yet to come. She's not so excited about that. And uh, uh, she's not even in the room. And uh, she's serving on kids. She's probably thankful that I didn't prophesy that over her. And, uh, but, but you hear what I'm saying? She's not 88 years of age. I want to make that very clear. But she's definitely past those years. But I, I just want to say this. There, is, there are things. I, no, I, I feel it in the atmosphere Levels of disappointment sitting on the inside of you. Thought things that you thought should have taken place. So I got many things in my life where I just go, man, I thought I would be here and I thought this would happen. But, but I, I know this, that God is a God of life. And this Christmas, come on, be reminded that He wants to bring life. Come on, we gotta, we gotta keep, we gotta get back under that. We, there's more gifts to open up. We're not gonna stop at one gift. I love this about God. He's not just a one gift God. He's got more. Who wants some more? So, so we go to the second gift, and this is a gift that was given to the, the shepherds. Now, these shepherds, are, as you know, are working out in the field. Uh, they're working hard. Uh, now, now the, the, the night of Jesus' birth, uh, it's late at night, and I have no idea how long they've been out. The Scripture does not plainly, clearly state that, but, I mean, this was their occupation. This was their job, that they worked hard to do this, looking after sheep. And sheep are like some of the stupidest animals on the planet. Come on, look at the person next to you and go, bam, right? Uh, I mean, I mean look, look, I'm sorry to tell you this, but, you know, we're likened to be like sheep as well. Uh, please don't be offended by that. But the reality is that it's pretty stupid, all right, I noticed I pointed at myself. Not only did I, uh, I put fingers and thumb in my direction, um, but, but, but see, see the, these, these shepherds are working hard, watching them, protecting them, leading them, steering them, guiding them, feeding them, cleaning them, rescuing them. Sheep are hard work. Let's see the story in Luke chapter two, verses eight. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news. And it will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, and you'll find a baby wrapped in cloth, Lying in a manger, suddenly a great company of a heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them, they'd gone to heaven and the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. Jesus was a gift to the shepherds. That this angel showed up and he goes, I want you to go down and check this out. There's, there's, there's a baby wrapped in cloth and in a manger. That, 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 that baby is a gift to you. Now, 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 now not, not only was it a gift to them, but it was a gift to humanity. Now, now you gotta ask the question then what, why was it? Such an incredible thing. Why did, why did God choose to send an angel to some shepherds? But because he could have sent them to the blacksmith, could have sent them to the cart builder, but he specifically sent them to shepherds. Now, 
that the reason is because these shepherds were raising lambs for sacrifices. Now, in Old Testament times, see, see, part of the job was that a household needed to go to the big city, the big smoke. They needed to turn up in Jerusalem, and they needed to sacrifice, bring a lamb to sacrifice at that time. It was a moment where there was a presentation for the covering of my sin. And so no matter where I lived in the region, if I was close by, it made it easier. But if I was at a long distance, it, it was a lot of work to get there. I, I mean, even if you did live in the city, it's a big job to make that happen. And my, my job was to bring a lamb to that sacrifice. If I, if I didn't have a lamb, then I would go to the shepherds. I would turn up the shepherds and I'd buy a lamb and that lamb was taken and that lamb was sacrificed so that my sins would be covered. And I would have to do that year in, year out. So you see, one uh, lamb was just enough to cover me for one year. It wouldn't cover me for the rest of my life. I had to do this for the, the rest of my life, annually showing up to do my thing. It was, a, it was a big job. It was a lot of work to pull that off. And so, so, so these shepherds, they represent work. Now, I want you to really think where I'm going here. But John the Baptist, about 30 years later, standing on the Jordan River, a crowd in front of him, Jesus shows up and he points at him and he says, look, the Lamb of God who will take the sins away from the world. Now I want you to see the significance of this because Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Up until that moment, I had to bring a lamb to, 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 to sacrifice just to cover me for one year. It was a lot of work to do that and a lot of work to do that year in, year out. But the Lamb of God shows up, and this is a significant, the gift to the shepherds, come on, coming up on the sh screen here, is the gift of rest. Because no longer do I need to make annual sacrifices. No longer do I have to work for my forgiveness. No longer do I have to work to be right with God. No longer do I have to work for my salvation. It's not about work. I can now rest when I say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. One sacrifice, Jesus on a cross. He came into this world, man, not only to give me life, but to give me rest. And when I prayed that prayer, when you prayed that prayer, oh my goodness, you can rest in that fact that that one sacrifice covered, I don't have to work for it anymore. Whew, come on, look at the person next to you say, come on, this is a message for you. Oh, so, so, so as it says there, the second gift is rest. And this was a good message to the shepherds. <laughs> it also kind of indicated that you're going to be out of a job. Uh, but but see, see, the thing is this, it's been known that sheep can fall into just six inches of water and are, are dumb enough not to flip themselves over and actually drown in six inches of water. Uh, you know, it's sometimes these shepherds have actually got to flip them upside. I thank God that they're shepherd. I'm talking about Jesus. When I'm messed up, when I, I, I'm lying, drowning in my sin, He comes and flips me over and says, come on, I'm gonna give you life and I'm gonna give you rest for the rest of your days. So, so, so that's good news. Come on, we're gonna look at the third gift. Who's loving this? Come on, I love gifts. I love unwrapping gifts. See, Christmas has got lots of all these gifts, these, these, these hidden things in the, in the Word. See, see, see the, the third gift that we wanna look at is the gift to the Pharisee. Now, now uh, Pharisees were known for being legalistic. Um, now, I want to, want to just say this, is that, uh, that this, this story I'm, uh, I'm, I'm about to mention, and about to read, actually wasn't at Christmas time, but Jesus used this moment to, 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 to point to his why, to point to why of Christmas. But the Pharisees were known for being very legalistic. Uh, it was all about rules, regulations. It was about doing right. It was about following instruction. And the problem with legalism is that the person typically ends up becoming very judgmental of other people. They, they, they look at their actions. They, and, and, you know, they, they quickly move away from, uh, they look at their hearts, but, you know, they point out the, the actions in other people. They become judgmental. They become finger pointers. They become fault finders. Uh, but, but the problem is simply this, is that uh, as a result, it causes people to be repelled 
from, from what God wants to bring to us. I, I remember when I first got fired up for God, I mean, I got fired up, but not too long after that, I started to become very legalistic about certain things. I'm fired up. I wanted to devour the Word. I'm grabbing hold of everything in the Word of God, and I'm just like, I want this, and I want that, and that's great. Now I'm starting to point fingers. Now I'm judging others because they're not living according to my standard. And that, 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 what that does is it repels people. Let's have a look at this, the Pharisee. Now his name is Nicodemus. And John chapter 3, 1 through 2. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. Right, so he's, he's up there. He's, he, he's, 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 he's a top dog in the place. And he comes to Jesus at night and he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who's come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God was not with you. Now, for starters, <laughs> he shows up at night. I, I mean, I'm guessing the reason he showed up at night is because it's dark. I can kind of sneak in, get with Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I can see that there's a gift on your life. I see that there's power. I see the miracles take place. In fact, when you preach and you teach, uh, there's, a, there's a great authority that is upon your life at that time. It's incredible what's on your life. But, but he comes in the dark. He doesn't want to be seen maybe by other religious leaders, maybe by his other brothers that were in the top dog positions at that time. But, but you know, he, I guess he doesn't want to have fault-finding fingers pointing at him. But, but Jesus responds by telling him, you can't enter heaven without being born again. And, uh, but, but then he says something after this that is probably the most repeated scripture all throughout the planet. In fact, it's probably one scripture that every one of you in this room has memorized. John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world. Come on, help me out here from the beginning. For God so loved the world. Come on, help me out here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one in son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, now, now let's say this. what's the gift? That's why I want to ask, what's the gift of Pharisee? Here we go. The gift is the gift of grace. See, 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 the gift of grace. No one can live up to God's standards. Even the best of the best legalisms, uh, legalists, you, can, you cannot, you cannot. Because you're going to stumble. You're going to trip over. You're going to make a mistake. And so the, 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 gift of, the gift of grace, despite me, despite my mess, despite everything that I've tripped up in, it brings a gift of grace. John, wherever you can't come and just get, play your keys right now, that would be incredible. Let, let's just have a look at this because the gifts come and you, you, you see your name on it. And the first one you open up is, is the gift of life. I love that. I love that he wants to bring life to my deadness. Now, number two is that he brings a, a gift of rest. Oh, man, I'm thankful that, man. I, I'm tired because I've worked so hard and I tried to do everything to get right with God, but it's just like I mess up. Now I feel bad. Now I feel condemned and I feel like I gotta do something. Help grandma across the road. To do something good, you know, I just kind of got to try and create a good case before God. No, 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 no. Rest. Gift of life. Gift of rest. Then there's a gift of grace. Because I really deserve punishment. If you be honest, you deserve punishment. When you're talking about an all holy God, it's, it's like an all holy God, that mess. But He brings grace. So, so I'm thinking this through and I'm like going, one gift after another gift and I've just given you three and we, we could spend hours pulling all the gifts that He's got for us. Christmas. I mean, the physical presents we're gonna get, I love getting presents. I love receiving. I'm sure you love receiving. 
But you'll also agree with me that Christmas is not just about getting. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I like getting. And I don't think God's got any problem with us getting. But it's also about giving. In fact, it says in Acts chapter 20, I think it is, Acts 20, 35, we repeat it here, but Jesus said it's better to, to give than it is to receive. So, so, so here I am, the Christmas story, unwrapping the gifts, gifts of life. A gift of peace. A gift of grace. I'm like, what, what can I give back to Him? When He's given me all this good stuff, what can I give back to Him? So, so, so I want to now... I want to look at now the, the these men that were known as the wise men. Because you know that when the wise men showed up, they came with gifts. Wise men saw a star and they traveled a great distance seeking after what they believed to be the Messiah. Matthew chapter 2. And after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, the wise men, from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the one who'd been born King of the Jews? We saw his star and when it rose, they've come to worship him. We skip down to verses nine. After they'd heard the King, they went on the way and the star They'd seen rose and went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened up their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, now, when you read that, it tells me that these wise men, the Magi, didn't just show up with a gift of what can I get away with. Have you ever been to those Christmas events where it's like there are going to be family members there, relatives that you probably haven't seen for a whole year, but you know they're going to be there and you, you kind of got to show up and you know there's going to be some gift exchange, so I got to bring something and I don't want to really spend, I don't really know them. It's like, I don't want to waste my money. And so you, you just kind of think to yourself, how do I, what's the minimal I can get away? So it's like the box of chocolates. I forgot to get that gift. Pull into the gas station, get a box of chocolates, a box of cookies. How many's ever done that before? Come on. Every one of us in this room. I mean, it's just like, because you're not really that connected to them. These magi, they show up, these wise men, they show up. And they don't come in with what can I get away gift. But look at the words. The words say they opened their treasures. And when I looked into that, the Greek word behind that, the word treasures means a storehouse for precious things, a treasure. The wise men laid a deposit of wealth at his feet. And why am I saying all this? Because what they bought was a gift for the king. This wasn't just any old king. This is, this is the Messiah, the promised one that had been promised for thousands upon thousands of years that was gonna change the world as they know it. And they open up their treasures. Some scholars say that it wasn't, because when you watch the kid movies, it's like little gift, gold, frankincense, meh, just a little... The scholars believe that it could have been at least seven camelfuls. I've even heard scholars say that every one of them had seven camelfuls. I've read other places where there was a, an army of people that went with them. And if you're ta- bringing treasures, a treasure chest fit for a king, I'm telling you, they're going to need to have a bit of an army around about them. And King Herod knew that they were coming. Must have been scouts knowing that there is a big party showing up. 
point was is that wise men, they bought gifts of their very best. Gifts of their very best. This Christmas is a season God is pulling His blessing into our lives. So this leads me to the question I wanna ask today. What is the greatest gift that you can give Jesus? What is the greatest gift you can give Jesus? Is it my love? Is it my time? Is it my treasure? My religious life? My spiritual life? Those things are good. But the greatest gift you can give Jesus is you. It's the greatest gift I can give back to Him. In fact, there's nothing really that I, there's no offering, that there, there, there's no works, there's nothing I can conjure up to, to kind of replace everything that He's given and is gonna continually give into my life. So the best I can bring back to Him at this time of the year is to give me. I don't know your story. I don't know what's going on in your world. Maybe it's been a year of turmoil, maybe a year of pain. Maybe you've had some moments where you kind of hit a crossroads. Do I go this way, go that way? And you went down a pathway. It's, whoa, I didn't expect that. But the goodness of God is you're still alive today. And the goodness of God is He still brings grace, peace, mercy. He brings life into our situations. Whoa, what's the best thing I can bring back to Him this year is I'm gonna bring me. I'm gonna give you everything I've got. Unfortunately, God, I'm sorry. When I look back over 2023, it's been a year where I've kind of given you that part of my life. G- gave you a few hours on a Sunday, get down to church once in a while. And every now and then, I p- <laughs> you, you remember, gee, I picked my Bible up, had a bit of a prayer. They did all these things. But you know that doesn't, match up. This season of Christmas is a time for us to go, God, I lay the past down. I'm sorry. Forgive me. But from now on, I give you my all. I give you my life. You've given me everything and I want to give you everything of me back, even my mess. As I give you that, God, give me life. Bring it back to me, God. as we finish up I, I want to I want to challenge you because because th- this is one of those messages I could very easily just go you know what Jesus name amen and you just go back but really it's one of those messages you just got to go you know what I got to put this in gear too many people in life are kind of doing life in neutral Depending on, you know, the, the gradient depends on which direction I go. And if, if life's going this way, then I'm over here. The gradient's here. I'm going over here. Everything's in neutral. Spiritually, it's just, oh, here, I'm going over here. And oh, now it's over. Yeah, come on, come on. We've actually got to go. You know what? After knowing this today, if the Magi can travel a long distance to give their best to Jesus, the least I can do is bring my best to Him and give Him my life. I'm putting that in gear. We kind of make that decision that, you know what, I refuse to walk out of this room today without engaging a high level of giving me to Him. Because you're so good, God. I want to encourage you we're gonna pray, but I'm gonna encourage you that over the coming days leading up to Christmas and even on Christmas Day, while you're celebrating family, friends, loved ones, take time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son into this world so that I could have life, so that I could have peace and receive the grace. And I choose from this point forward to go in your direction. With every eye closed in this room, today is the day to give Him your all. The truth is He, he expects 
nothing less than us giving us all. Maybe you're listening today and it's like, man, I, I know I haven't given Him all. Whether it's for the first time in your life or maybe you've been away from God, you're back to not living 100% for Him, but you're saying, you know what? I wanna get it right with God. With every eye closed, Who would say, yes, I want to give you all? I'm going to count to three. And if you're in this room saying, yeah, I want to get my life right with God. I want to become a Christian or I just want to give Him my all because I haven't given Him my all. On the count of three, would you lift your hands? Here we go. One, two, come on, be bold. Here we go. Three, lift your hands. Hands popping up all over there. No one's looking, but just lift those hands high so we can see who you are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can put your hands down. Is there anyone else? Nine hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else that says, hey, I want to give you my all. Let's stand to our feet across this room. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe if the band can join me. Come on, band, come up here. We're going to sing, come let us adore really soon. But there were nine hands that went up around this room and I want us to pray a prayer right now, whoever you are in this room. I'm not going to sing you loud, but we're going to pray a prayer right now. I want us to all pray this prayer. Close your eyes, say these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Come on, everyone out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning, I ask that you forgive me. Forgive me of me, my mess, my mistakes and sin. Jesus, come into my life. I want to follow you from this point forward. I choose today to give you my all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just close your eyes, lift your hands. I just want you to receive His life. Thank you, Jesus. Such a good God.